I'm Dr. David Hill, and today we're going to talk about removing fluid from ears. Now, when we talk about removing fluid from ears, we have to think, first of all, where is this fluid? Why is it there? There are two parts of the ear that the fluid can collect in. The first is what's considered the outer or external ear. That starts way out here at the part of the ear that you can pull on, which we call the auricle, and it goes down the hole and stops where the eardrum is. That's all the outer ear. Now you may get fluid there from swimming or playing in the ocean or just from taking a bath or a shower. And sometimes it can feel a little bit trapped. There are a couple of things you can do. The easiest is to lean over and shake your head. But while you do that, you can actually open up the ear canal by pulling up and backward on that outer ear. That kind of unkinks the canal and makes a little bit more room for water to run out. You can also use some sort of wicking to get it out. You could just roll up a piece of tissue and just touch it to the edge of the ear canal. You don't want to jam something way down in there. You can cause an obstruction. You could put wax up against the eardrum. You can scrape the inside of the ear canal really easily. It's not made for contact with the outside world. It's very easily damaged. So don't put something down in the canal, but just touch a little wick to the outside of the canal and the water should run out. Now if the canal is becoming painful or clogged up or it hurts every time you move the ear, you may be getting a swimmer's ear. That's probably going to need antibiotics. Early on you can try an alcohol, vinegar, or peroxide solution to try and make it better, but if it's getting to be really painful or you have drainage or you're having a tough time hearing, it's probably time to see a doctor and get antibiotic drops. Now, the other part of the ear where fluid can collect is what we call the middle ear. That's where the bones inside the ear live that conduct sound to the nerves that generate the sound signals to go to the brain. The middle ear is essentially a closed chamber. It has one opening, the eustachian tube, which leads from this cavern inside the skull down into the nose and drains up inside the nose. That allows both fluid and air to enter and leave the canal. Whenever the eustachian tube gets blocked up, for example, if you have a cold or if you've been flying on an airplane, you may get a buildup of pressure or fluid inside the middle ear. Now, a couple of things can make that better. A couple of squirts of afrin up the nose and nasal decongestant. I wouldn't do that for more than a couple of days, however, because that can lead to uh, having a really hard time stopping using the afrin. You stop using it, your nose gets congested. So that's a very, very short-term solution. Otherwise, if you're having a cold, sometimes you just have to wait for the cold to get better. If you're a teenager or an adult, you can try pseudoephedrine or phenylephrine. It's not clear that those things do a whole lot, but they may help some people some of the time. Now, if the eardrum becomes painful or you're having fevers or drainage, again, you might have a middle ear infection. You're going to want a doctor to look in your ear and see what he or she sees and see if antibiotics might be helpful in that case. Talking about getting fluid out of your ear, I am Dr. David Hill.